fucking entertain yourself some you know somehow aren't you my name is matt welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about this will be the first video and then we're going to go into the free valve system and the court system and all these other flappy flappy jobby bumpy you know fucking what have you contraptions whatever mechanisms so the first thing i want to do is i want to explain exactly why we want to have a camless um a camless engine it is <coughs> as far as four strokes go it is the holy grail it is like having a um it is like having an oilless sorry i'm just fucking pissing about it's like having an oil free burning two stroke is camless engines um you know one of the um drawbacks of the reasons why four strokes are shit compared to two strokes is because of their valve system. It is expensive, it is heavy, there's a lot of losses, there's a lot of friction losses, makes a lot of noise, you have to basically, it restricts you in lots of other ways, um, port geometry, port placement, port numbers, and a lot of other fucking reasons. Um, you know, and then there's also physical limitations of the actual valve train itself. Uh, so valve flow, spring flow, clatter, chatter, fucking you name it, whatever. The fact of the matter is, is that it costs money, it's heavy, uh, it draws power from the engine, and there's a lot of this thing about, and we'll go into it uh, through this series, when I'll actually do a series as well about cams and, because that's something we haven't really covered, cams and valves, more on the camshaft side of things, to do with uh, ramp up, cam flanks, uh, degrees, um, you know, basically uh, VVTIs, uh, you know, all your Z-Tech, Duratech, fucking whatever techs, all the other uh, variable valve, because there's variable lift and there's variable valve timing. So there's when you open your valves and how far you open your valves, that's also quite important. Now, your valve lift kind of also changes your timing, because if you have to push a valve out and you push it out a certain lift, if you push it further, and it's generally going to take longer to uh, take a longer time to open, but also a longer time to close, which will change your variation of your valve timing. As in, when just say if you have two valves, so one opens like this, like that. When this one shut, this one's still got to shut, so that can vary your valve timing by just a bit, especially at higher RPMs where you want it to be a longer duration. There's valve overlap we need to cover. There's fucking so much we have to do with camshafts. I have been doing a lot on two strokes, let's fucking, you know, introduce a bit more of the four stroke shit in. So, um, so there's all these issues with uh, camshafts, you know, basically, that a camshaft is very much, phys uh, you know, physically rigid and fixed, um, so there's no variability to it. And just like moving from carbs to injectors gave us an awful, uh, and, you know, a big performance increase, a lot of variability, a lot of, uh, you know, nipple twisting and all the rest of it, we can tweak all the numbers and buttons and what have you and you can have different PWM durations and blah 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 blah, pulse widths, you can change them and all the rest of it, that gives us a lot more control. The same thing happens with uh, cam camless um, or variable, infinitely variable valves, just like CVTs if they did work properly in the way that we wanted them for high, you know, small compact high power, uh, high torque operations, the camless engine is kind of like that. So, it's not just, it, it, there's two parts to this. There's camless, as in getting rid of um, cams, so no cams. But there's also another version in a sense, which is um, variable valves. And generally we kind of think that they are the same thing. But there are ways that you can actually get around it, where you could use a cam to drive, just say a pressure system or something like that, and then it'd be you could just control. Um, so you could use a cam to have the opening event always the same, but then you could also use like springs, uh, pneumatic springs and stuff like that, some other control to actually control when you close, which would change your duration. Um, so there's loads of funky ways of doing it and all the rest of it. Um, I can take ten. Right then, where were we? Camless engines. Yes, so you have these two different varieties of them. Um, but basically, uh, getting back to the point of why do we want them? 
is because your engine, you know, has an RPM that increases. And what's good uh, valve lift, valve duration at one RPM is not good at another RPM because this is constantly variable. That's the problem. Your RPM goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And because camshafts are fixed, then we have to pick one that we kind of like. And then when you start going down the RPM range or up it, it becomes less and less efficient, less and less effective. It becomes more and more shit. And um, the kind of like the hunt, um, as soon as you've made it, you've fixed it. You know, and that's why people get when they want to start doing up their cars. If you're going to stay, stay at constant, you know, top end RPM, you know, for most uh, bikes and for cars and all the rest of it, the uh, valve profile, fuck it, yeah. the valve profile is fixed. Oh, for fuck's sake. So that, you know, generally in cars and bikes and all the rest of it, the valve profile is picked for both performance, fuel efficiency, and sometimes even emissions and so on and so on. So when you, you know, when you want to start going racing and stuff, you can basically change your camshafts for more aggressive, longer duration, depending, uh, you know, larger valve overlap, stuff like that. Um, you know, so your valve timing is not just about... Um, how much air and fuel you can fucking shove in it's all about how the exhaust scavenging and all sorts of other funky reasons and we try and pick the best one now there are different varieties you know you've got your VVTI and your variable lift and um, all this that and the other and you've got your Duratex and your Z-Tex and your fucking um, what's it called now um, Suzuki did a helical one which is absolutely beautiful and we'll do an entire video on that that's be part of this series um, where uh, basically it has a, a helical twisting cam the problem with that is the cost to manufacture that is just absolutely fucking astronomical and it's basically not worth it um, the other thing is as well as its reliability over time of getting any kind of shit in there can completely ruin the operation of the entire system but I will show you that I'll also do some CAD because the videos and that uh, aren't as clear where we use the CAD. We can do a cross section, you can see the profile change and all the rest of it. Um, very, very, very sexy system, but again, and, and that was fine because it actually does give you the full range as long as you've got a big enough helical twist to it. Um, very good system, apart from the fact that uh, it's reliability. Very clever system, let's put it that way, using geometry to sort out your issues. Although that doesn't really change your valve lift, it just changes your valve duration. If we had some kind of just like the free valve system or something like that, or multi air system from Fiat and blah blah blah, and all the, the Renault fucking electromagnet one that BMW tried as well, if you could have valves that have no cams whatsoever and you use solenoids or something like that. Um, or voice coils possibly you could use basically then you can open and close your valves not only that is it gives you the ability to do um, um, pulsed opening so you can open close open close or you can feather there's loads of little weird little instances where you're trying to get the pulses in your inlet uh, manifold and your exhaust manifold to work to your advantages and you can eke out better performance just by changing and having full control over the valve um, one thing I will say is, why is it so hard to do? You know, you might think, well, I'll just get a fucking solenoid. You know, you have the needle in your fucking tattoo gun that goes up and down. And, that, you know, that can go really quite fast and all the rest of it. BMW tried a system. It chewed up 48 volts, shitloads of current. And it was noisy as fuck, really heavy and really expensive. Why can't you just stick a valve to a solenoid? The problem is, is that valves are fucking quite heavy. You look at the solenoid that's in your tattoo gun, it's shifting them a couple of needles. Yes, really fast not much lift to them and look at the size of that you know look at the size of that solenoid that coil and magnet pack for your fucking tattoo gun you know what I mean that's what you'd want for a valve something that size and you look at the size of it um, you know that's moving these little tiny needles you're trying to move an entire fucking valve it's a lot of mass and you need to accelerate that open and then close one of the other problems with these systems as well is keeping the valve system keeping the valve closed keeping the valve closed so when your piston comes down on the intake stroke you have got to resist the, the exhaust valve has got to resist opening 
yes, your inlet valve opens, which is awesome, that's what you want, but your exhaust valve has got to remain closed, otherwise you're going to draw in um, exhaust gases, which in a sense is one of the one of the good things, is if you can have full control, you could also open the intake valve to draw in a bit of exhaust gases that are on the way out um, for, you know, exhaust gas recirculation and stuff like that. Which means you could use the valves themselves, which means you won't have to add an additional valve system, which means it'd be cheaper and it also means it'd weigh a bit less because you don't have to have these weird exhaust gas recirculation. You could just have use your exhaust valve to do it. Um, you could also use that system as well to um, flush another cylinder out. There's loads of little funky little ideas out there, which are all really quite cool. Um, but like I say, the amount of the solenoids you'd need, you know, if you look at the uh, E-Tech um, valve system that we have, you know, that you have for the two strokes, uh, for the direct injection, that fucking needle in the side for that high pressure system is fucking tiny, you know, and yes, you're pumping a lot of fuel past it and all the rest of it, even that's got springs in. The problem with a lot of these systems is these um, camless systems where you're just using a solenoid is you have to have a spring to hold the valve shut. You don't be supplying power to that solenoid to keep the valve closed. You want to use a solenoid for act actuation because each valve spends more, time of its, more of its time closed than it does open. There are four strokes, two of them need valves to be open, the other two don't. And these valves very rarely, there's a bit of overlap. But each valve will spend three of the four strokes closed, exhaust or inlet. So you basically use a spring, and if you use a spring, yes, you've got rid of the cam, and yes, you've got variability. But now you fight. Now your solenoid has to be beefy enough to fight that fucking spring, and that spring has to have enough load, uh, enough spring force to hold your valve closed during the power stroke, um, which is not too bad because basically, obviously, there's combustion, which is pushing the valves into the seats. That's not a problem. But on inlet, your exhaust valve has to stay closed, and on your exhaust stroke, um, not your exhaust stroke, through all the other strokes, your valves have to remain closed when they're not required. On your exhaust stroke, it isn't too bad because your piston's coming up, so your exhaust valve then has to push against them pressures. That's the other problem. When your piston's on its way up to push your exhaust gases out, your exhaust valve has to open into that um, increasing pressure zone, and, you know, it's just after your um, combustion process which means the pressures inside the cylinder are high so you've got this fight between each valve and we'll draw it out and actually explain more about camless engines when we go into the actual camless side of things and not look at the VVTIs and all those things what the problem is of how these valves have got to basically fight different processes at different times and each valve has has its own set of problems so that's just an introduction to the basics of why we want it. Why do we want it? Because then we can fucking... If we have variable uh, cams, uh, you know, variable camshaft timing or valve timing, if we have infinitely variable, we can do a lot of things with it. And then with our injection included, then we can do all sorts with that as well. So we're trying to make everything variable. You know, computer control for your spark, so we can have any degree we want of spark timing, advanced or retarded you know, under certain loads and all the rest of it. You know, the other thing we're going to look at and we're going to start a series on is, because um, it's hilarious, is uh, variable compression ratios. Anyway, that's another video. So this is just an introduction to this. We're going to start looking at all the other, like I say, rotary, val rotary valves and all the other ones that are trying to get rid of cams or variable valve timing and lift and all the rest of it. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.